Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about uh, PowerShell access control, managing it. Uh, this is a two-part session actually. I'm going to talk about managing from the access control, I mean from the uh, command line. And uh, in part two after lunch I'm going to talk about uh, doing it a little bit with DSC. Uh, the presentation is mostly going to cover uh, a custom module that I've created. Uh, that's where the DSC resources are defined that we'll talk about in the second session. First a little bit about myself. Uh, name's Ron Edwards. Uh, I'm a PowerShell enthusiast. I'm not very active, you know, like on Twitter and in blogging and stuff. Uh, my two biggest claim to fame, I guess, are uh, I'm the co-founder of the Mississippi PowerShell User Group. I run that with Mike Robbins. I'm sure you guys have all met Mike. Uh, we meet virtually on the second Tuesday of every month, so anybody's welcome to, to come and uh, join that. And uh, I was the winner of the advanced category in the 2012 scripting games. I was, uh, you know, pretty lucky, I think, to, to be able to do something like that. A little bit about what we're going to cover. First, I'm going to go over, you know, what I'm actually talking about when I say access control, so that we're all on the same page. Talk about a couple of different ways that you can manage it. Um, obviously, we're going to focus in on PowerShell, though. I'll talk about why, in my opinion, it's the best way to manage access control. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a demo. So, what do I mean when I say access control? Um, you know, the the big thing is. I'm talking about who or what can actually access a securable object in Windows. And in Windows, by securable object, I mean uh, things like files and folders, registry keys, Active Directory objects, printers, services, processes. Uh, there, there's a very extensive list. Uh, there's also a lot of stuff that this really doesn't cover. Um, but there's a, a very, very large set of securable objects. So. I'm also talking about, though, what type of access attempts will generate audit events that will show up in the audit log. So both of those bullets are actually controlled by these things called security descriptors. The security descriptor essentially consists of four parts. There's an owner, uh, and, and the owner actually has a couple of little special rights over the, uh, the security descriptor. There's a group. You can forget I even said that, though. We're not going to talk about that. That's something Windows doesn't even really use. And then you have two things called access control list, or, or ACLs. You have the discretionary access control list, which controls that first bullet up there, the who or what can access the securable object, who's granted or who's denied access. And you also have something called a system access control list, or a SACL. That's what covers the second bullet, uh, the auditing. It technically can, can control a couple of other things, but we're not going to go into that uh, in this presentation. That's just something else to be aware of if you do start going down this path. So those ACLs, both of them, really are they're, uh, just collections of these things called access control entries, or ACEs. And an ACE, when you break it down to its most basic level, is really made up of pretty much four parts. You have a type, whether or not it's an access or a deny, I mean, uh, an allow or deny ACE, and those would belong in the, the DACL, or whether or not it's an audit ACE, which would belong in the SACL. You also have a principle. That's the, the who or what uh, I was talking about in the beginning. It can be a user, a group, a computer object, you know, and um, I, I guess pretty much anything with a security identifier. You have an access mask, which, you know, that, that's for no matter what the type of the securable object, the access mask is just a 32-bit number. So, you know, when you, when you start looking at it at the system level, all it cares about is, is a 32-bit number. That number may mean something different for a file than it does for a registry key or an Active Directory object, but they're all, that access mask is always interpreted by the system as a number. You also have a set of flags. Uh, and, you know, this is really kind of, uh, you know, uh, simplifying this, but the, the flags, you have things like, uh, an audit ace, for instance, has special flags that tell it whether or not it's going to apply to uh, events that were successful or that failed. Uh, you have flags that, uh, if the securable object belongs to some kind of a hierarchy, you have flags that control if the ace will apply to any child objects, so like a you know, for a folder, if you have an ACE that belongs to a folder, the flags on the ACE will tell whether or not it's going to apply to the folder itself or to child fo subfolders or to subfiles. So how to manage access control. This, you know, this, this is not an extensive list by any means. Uh, one way that I'm sure everybody here is familiar with is what I'm going to call the ACL editor, the Windows GUI to do it. You, in Explorer, you right click on a file or a folder, you go to properties. Um, and you go to the security tab and you see that. You know, that's a very friendly way to modify this. You know, that's if you want to open up the ability to write to a folder or something like that for a user. The problem with it, you know, it's, it doesn't scale. You're stuck doing things one by one. You can't automate that uh, at all. So 
It is very friendly and very easy to view what's in that security descriptor though from that. You also have some command line utilities. Uh, you know, there, there's a whole slew of these and, and I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I probably haven't used most of them that do exist, but you know, like uh, you have things like sub in ACL, eye cackles, and they fix that automation problem, but they, they uh, you know, it's not really their fault. Security descriptors are incredibly complex in, in what they can contain. And it's really hard for them to just present, you know, if you say, hey, what is, what does a security descriptor look like for this object? It's really hard to, you know, depending on the utility, to even read the output that it gives you. And, you know, of course, that's going to be console text. So if you wanted to do something with that, like save it for later or something like that, that's not going to work out too well. And then we have PowerShell, which, you know, because if you look at it as a platform, PowerShell has the ability, you know, you can run the command line utilities from it. But PowerShell also has a couple of different ways to manage access control. One way is WMI. I wouldn't suggest you do WMI, though, unless you absolutely have to. The WMI for access control. WMI itself is uh, an amazing technology. Just for access control, it's pretty painful. Uh, you have the, what I'm going to call the native way. That's using .NET objects. Uh, and get ACL and set ACL kind of give you a shortcut. You know, that's, that's about the only PowerShell commands that I'm aware of that will make it so, you know, you don't have to go to the .NET object to get the security descriptor. But if you want to change it, you're stuck going through uh, .NET methods and things like that. Uh, and then there's, you know, third-party modules, one of which I've created, but there are others out there. So, you know, um, I, I, I really think you should, uh, if you're going to do this kind of stuff from PowerShell, you should give some of these third-party modules a shot. So to go a little bit more into why I think PowerShell is the best for this, you know, I, you, you hear this all the time. It, it, you know, it's, it's object-oriented. You're going to get objects back. So that part about when I was talking about the command line utilities, they give you this information, but what do you do with it if you want to save it for later or analyze it uh, through some other means? With PowerShell, you don't have to like parse through any text. You, you're given something in these properties. You can easily export it to a CSV or to XML. You can play around with the order of the formatting if you like. Um, and, and the formatting system, you know, I was talking about formatting a second, but also formatting system, I, I'm talking about if you make your own custom commands, it's very, very easy to override the default formatting so that you know, things are presented in a way that you can understand, you know. Um, the system's discoverable, so a lot of those command lines, you, you, I've, I've found myself when I've had to use them in the past, you're, you're stuck, you're really stuck with the help that they have built in or, you know, searching on the internet. Um, the syntax a lot of times is kind of hard to, to understand, and if you, if you think you figured it out and then you put it down for four or five months and you come back later, you're stuck looking through that again. It's really hard to really master that kind of stuff. PowerShell is discoverable though. I mean, you have, besides the help system, um, you have it, things like IntelliSense and tab completion. So it makes it to where if you, if you kind of get used to something, if you come back four or five months later and you're a little rusty, it'll, it'll help you, you know, if, uh, to get around that kind of stuff. Obviously the automation, you know, if you take the time to figure it out, and th this kind of goes, th those command line utilities, if you're trying to, you know, when you deploy this application, you know that you need to open this registry key or something like that. Um, but if you take the time to do it interactively in PowerShell, you can literally just save that and you now have a script. And then you can later on go in and, and turn that into a function that, that can be reused. Um, and also PowerShell provides DSC. Now out of the box, you can't yet do, uh, to my knowledge, access control stuff with DSC. But, you know, it, it's very, very easy to extend that system to create your own custom resources. So if you, again, can do something, if you can figure out how to do it in, from the command line, you can make a resource or somebody else can make any, a resource easily and then they can go, you can go get it and use it. So, like I said, we're gonna mostly cover a, a module that I've created called the PowerShell Access Control Module. It's a free module that it can actually uh, supplement. So if you, if you like how you do things natively in PowerShell with get ACL and set ACL, maybe you feel like uh, creating access control entries is a little bit tough or something like that. You can still use this just to kind of supplement it and create shortcuts for some of that stuff. Or it can completely replace it, if you would like. Uh, and if you want to try to do things with stuff that the native commandlets don't support, like services and printers and stuff, you, you, know, you, you have to use the, the, the module completely for getting and setting the security descriptor. Um, you know, like I kind of mentioned, it provides some commands that, that fill in the gap on what's missing uh, out of the box. Uh, and it also provides DSC resources. So right now it's on the TechNet Gallery. There's a, uh, we're going to be covering version 4, which um, 
So version three is actually on GitHub, and there's a version of it on the DSC repository, the, the PowerShell.org DSC repository. I actually need to update that. Uh, there are a couple of things that have been fixed in, in that version. But version four, you can get three or four on the gallery. We're gonna be covering version four. It's completely rewritten. It's, a, it's my first uh, attempt at doing anything like a binary module with binary commandlets. Um, so anyway, the, the plan is one day to have the, all the source and everything up on GitHub. But right now you can get the module itself on TechNet, on the TechNet gallery. So let's go into the demo. Now when I was, when I was actually sitting down to try to write a demo for this, um, I've given a talk similar to this uh, at a smaller venue. And I had a lot of files that I just kind of walked through that you know, showed like this is how you get things, this is, this is how you would view the security descriptor. And I, I just wasn't going to have time. This is a very, very, can be complicated topic. topic. So, you know, we, I felt I didn't have time to really step through each one of those. Those are going to be available in the resources that I make, uh, that I give to Richard later. So if you want to walk through those, by all means do it. It really covers how to do a lot of things natively and then how to do it with the module. So because most of what I'm going to show you actually can be done natively. It's just, it doesn't really feel like a PowerShell command. It feels more like you're, you're making like a, an application or something. It doesn't lend itself well to interactive command line use the, the native way. So what I decided to do I'm just going to go through a very simple scenario and I'm going to show you how to do it natively and then like I said my module can supplement the native command so we're going to slowly modify the original script that we make and make it into a one line command and if anybody has any questions along the way let me know I'll have some a couple of sides about some of the different things that, uh, as we're talking about them so hopefully my fingers will cooperate and my brain will co cooperate and I can do this but what we're going to start with we're going to work on this path and since I'm going to use it a couple of times I'm going to define it so if you've ever worked with the native commandlets to do this you'll this will look very familiar to you You start by using git ACL right and so that gives you if you don't delete it it helps that gives you uh, an object that gives you a security descriptor so the default formatting is going to show it like in a list like this um, this in and of itself you know isn't that uh, useful because you can't see anything but the first access control entry if you send that to a list instead of a table, uh, you'll see that now it's getting a little bit more useful. You can see uh, there's, there's the owner I was talking about. You can see the group. You have uh, an access property. That's the DACL, the discretionary access control list. And there's an audit property. Now, by default, you're not going to be able to see the, uh, the SACL. You actually have to have a special right that's been granted to you. Administrators have it by default. And you have to tell PowerShell that you want that. So you would, you would come in and say audit. Our little scenario, we're not going to cover that, um, but uh, again, the, the, supplemental, the supplemental files that will be available, they'll cover, they cover that if you try to walk through those. So if you want to look at, so right here, we're only seeing part of each of these access control entries. So we're, we're not able to actually tell what these apply to. For a folder, you can have ACEs that apply to the folder itself, to subfolders, and to files. So if you want to actually view uh, all the properties on each ace you look into this access property and by default it's going to come out as a list so you know it's showing all the information there as a table looks a little bit friendlier and we, we are zoomed in a lot here so what we're going to do we'll wrap that let's see how this turns out all right uh, I'm, I think that's good enough for now so if you look this is showing that we have one two three four five six aces uh, we'll look at this first one here. This ace is, is uh, granting, it's an allow ace, so it grants the system account full control. You can see that they're all, uh, all of these are inherited. But this first one is granting system full control to, now this part is what throws a lot of people, the inheritance flags and the propagation flags. So I'm gonna step through these real quick. Uh, you might, you know, I, I didn't get them the first time I, I read about them, so. Uh, don't feel bad if, if you know it takes you uh, if you have to read a little bit later or if you want to ask me a, a, a question about them in a little bit so container inherit since that is present on this ace that means that this ace is going to apply to child containers for the file system child containers of folders are subfolders uh, if this was a registry ace then a child container would be a sub key object inherit means it's going to apply to child objects 
in the file system, a child object of a folder is a file. So this ACE applies to subfolders and files. Does it apply to the actual object itself? For that, you have to look at propagation flags. And for that one, you're actually looking for the absence of a flag. There are two valid propagation flags. There's inherit only, and if inherit only is set, that means this ACE will not apply to the folder itself, or to the object itself. For the file system, you're talking the folder. In this case, inherit only is not set, so this ACE does apply to the folder, the subfolders, and to files. There is another propagation flag. We're really not going to cover this in this presentation, but for, for your information, it's, it's called no propagate inherit. And what that says is if this is, you know, this can still apply to child objects, but it's not going to apply to their children. It won't apply to grandchild objects. Now, you can see this last ACE down here. Um, you know, one thing we're seeing numeric rights here. You know, that's uh, built in. That access mask I was talking about earlier, it's a 32-bit integer. So, like, in theory, you would think um, that it's, it's almost like 32 on and off switches. So you would say, ah, maybe there's 32 different things that, that you can uniquely specify for an object. It doesn't quite work that way. Um, there's actually, I believe it's 16 bits for, you know, in that access mask are reserved for object-specific rights. And then you have a couple, I think there's eight of them that are for standard rights that are kind of shared between them. Things like take ownership. You know, if, if take ownership is set, um, if you look up the numeric right for it for a file system, it's the same numeric right for any of those other securable objects. There's also four bits that are used for what's called generic rights. And that's kind of a shorthand way. You know, if you say, hey, I don't care what this object is, I know that I want generic all. I want, I want whatever I put in the principle, this is going to give them full control. You set these generic rights and the, the, you know, the security system knows, all right, they said generic all, so this is a file. So g generic all means full control, and for a file it means this. It's, so that's what you're seeing here. You'll see this on a lot of system files and system you know, keys that are created by um, uh, keys, registry keys. Sorry, I can't think while I'm up here. So, so we're, we're looking at that, and, and this you know, looks, it's a lot of information, and it's hard. I even find myself, after playing with this stuff a lot, I still have to really look at it and kind of turn my head sideways when I'm looking to see what each one is talking about. We'll, we'll uh, try to simplify that in a little bit, but next, let's talk a little more about the normal pattern for, for getting and changing and setting. So, well, I just kind of gave it away, I guess, but you normally get the security descriptor, you make changes here, and then when you're done, any of the changes you make, they're not actually saved yet. Um, I'm going to call set ACL with the what if because we're going to keep going back to the original security descriptor without making changes uh, in this example. But you would get your chain, you would get your security descriptor, you would make whatever changes, and then to finalize them, to really put it out there so that it does apply to that object, you would call set ACL. So. Going back to what we currently have, it looks like we have a system full control, administrators full control, users have read and execute, uh, there. users have read and execute, and uh, append data, create files, and creator owner has some generic rights that, you know, we'd have to go look that up to see what it is. Let's give another user, let's give them full control over the folder, the subfolder, and the files, except we don't want them to be able to delete the folder, all right? So to do that, we first let's start with giving them full control over everything. So what you would normally do, there's a, there's a couple of different methods. You have add access rule, set access rule, and reset access rule. Uh, they're all slightly different. Um, if, if we have a little bit of time after the, the presentation, I'll, I'll be glad to go into the differences. The, uh, the little demo files that are going to be uh, available for download, they go into the difference of them. But for now, we're just going to use add access rule. And if you look at the, the overload for this, you see that it takes, and this is all very, you know, this, is, this doesn't feel like you're doing PowerShell right now. You know, we're having to actually look at this .NET method to see what it takes. You could look this up. You could find reference code for it or something like that. But, you know, we know that we need an instance of this object, right? So we're going to have to call new object. We're going to do that. Now, Normally, you know, we'd have to go to like MSDN to look up how do you even create one of these. I'm very quickly, you know, going to go through this real quick. Don't feel bad if you're not following this part right here because, I mean, that's, that's kind of the point. Um, this thing's going to take a principle as its first argument. It's going to take file system rights, which is enumeration as its second. So we want to do control. 
Next, it's going to take those inheritance flags. So remember, we said we want this to apply to the folder, the subfolder, and file. So we want container, inherit, object inherit. So that's going to cover the subfolders and files, if I've spelled everything right. The next one is the propagation flags. We want it to, to actually apply to the folder itself. Now, we said we don't want delete access. We're going to cover that in a minute. But since we, we do want it to apply to the folder itself, we're going to say no propagation flags. And then the last thing you specify is whether or not it's an allow or a deny ace. In this case, we're looking for allow. So we run that. And if we call add access rule, ace to add. Uh, one more time before we add it, let's look at what that security descriptor looks like. All we have are inherited aces. If we add that and then take a look, you'll see that our limited user has been added. Now remember, this doesn't, you know, the, the C PowerShell folder does not have this yet. This is all in memory. So next, let's talk about how we can stop them from being able to delete the folder itself. You know, we could just create, we could add another access rule that denies them that right. Uh, but I'm going to actually show you something that it, when I was first working with this stuff, I didn't fully understand it, and it, it really kind of blew my mind that it could do this. Uh, we're going to use remove access rule. Now, it's just like add and that it takes a single ace. And what's really neat about this is it's going to take, you give it a reference ace, and it's going to look in to what's already there, and it'll, it'll basically make sure that's not there. Uh, if you do have access, though, that, that is granted currently, that's in your, or that, that exists currently in your reference in the current DACL, uh, it's, it literally just pull that. And I mean, it, ta it takes your inheritance flags and your propagation flags and things like that into account. So let's create our reference ace. So ace to remove equals new object file system access rule. And again, our principal. This time delete. Now, this isn't, technically you would want to remove a couple of other things besides delete. You'd want to do take ownership and delete files and stuff. But, you know, imagine that doing this will literally make it where the limited user has no ability to delete the folder itself. Now, we don't want this to apply to subfolders and files. We want them to be able to do whatever they'd like under there. So, no inheritance flags. Container inherit will not be set and, and uh, object inherit will not be set. And we don't want any propagation flags because we do want it to apply to the object. And we want this to be an allow ace. So, ace to remove. And this is the part that's really neat to me, at least. If we look at what we currently have before we run it, we have one ace granting limited user rights. And as a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's filter that on. Identity, reference, match, limit. There we go. So we have one ace that applies, right? So let's remove our reference ace to remove. When you look at this again, oh wow, we have two aces. So it actually just added an ace. We told it to remove an access rule, but what it literally did was, if you look at this first ace, all those file system rights, that's a lot. Just think of that as full control minus delete. It's everything that full control had except delete. It's an allow ace, it gives limited user. And if you look here, you notice it applies to the subfolders and files and it applies to the folder. So they can still do all that other stuff they had with full control. And then you have an ace here that's delete. And if you look, it only applies to subfolders and files. It does not apply to the folder. So, I mean, this is where, you know, the .NET framework has some incredibly powerful uh, methods to work with this stuff. So PowerShell itself gets to inherit all that. It's just really tough, you know, to, to go from, especially if you're just learning PowerShell, to try to take this stuff you know, you see all these other things where these, these simple commandlets with these named parameters and all this stuff. Um, so you've got the power, you just don't really have the front end for it. So, you know, we, we've basically completed our scenario. This is the point where you would save this out and you would call set, right? We're not going to do that. We're going to go in and kind of tweak this a little bit. So, um, and, and you know, I want to say up front, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. I still do, you know, this is, if, if you don't want to have some dependency on another module or something like that, you can still do a ton of, of awesome stuff this way. So let's talk a little bit about the PowerShell access control module. Let's see if we can clean this up. The first thing, you're going to want a friendly way to view this kind of stuff, right? So there is a command called git pack access control entry. It's alias to git access control entry. So let's take this, remember this is a .NET security, uh, or hold on, let's, 
let's start over and get the security descriptor again. So li our limited user stuff's not going to be there. But if you take a look at ACL, uh, get type, that is a directory security object. This is what get ACL gave us. But you can call this get pack access control entry method or commandlet against it. And if you look, it's showing you, you know, uh, this is something you didn't see earlier. When we were looking at the access property, we, didn't, we couldn't see the path, we couldn't see the owner, we couldn't see the status on whether or not the, the ACL inheritance, the DACL was set to inherit ACES or not. So get pack, pack access, access control entry is showing you that. But you can see, we're also looking at, you can see, you know, that first ACE is still the, that we saw earlier, allowing system full control. It's still here. So you can see allow system full control. You can see where it's inherited from. And then this applies to part. This is kind of a shorthand way to, to easily see what the, all those inheritance flags and propagation flags were showing. O means object, C, so the folder for a file system. It would be the, the registry key for the registry. It's GUI in the console. Child containers and child objects, subfolders, <coughs> subfolders. Now there is a way, I'm going to turn this off in just a second because I prefer this shorthand notation. Uh, well, let me show you what it looks like in a list because what is happening Notice in the list applies to, you know, it's showing subfolders, files, this folder, subfolders. And that actually changes for like a registry key. Um, those might be the only two providers where it really, you know, shows you a friendlier name than object and child containers. And if you prefer, you can actually um, set this up. You, you know, there's this pack options hash table. And you can say pack options dot uh, abbreviate applies to. So now if you call get pack access control entry, and if I spelled that right, uh, apparently I did not. Pack options abbreviate applies to. You misspelled applies. Ah, did I? Get two P's. I thought it does have two P's. Let's see. Oh, don't abbreviate applies to. You can see where I cheated earlier. So, <coughs> yep, that's my fault. So. When you call this, you'll see that, you know, now, and because we're zoomed in, it's wrapping that. But personally, I don't like that because you don't get the, the pattern of, like, yeah. being able to easily see that it's not applying to a folder, you know, because of, there's an absence, there's a space. So let's put that back in. This works just out of the box with a lot of other stuff, you know, get service, bits, get uh, pack access control entry, right? That's what the bit service has for its security descriptor. Uh, you could, do, you know, feed it a printer. Um, get pack access control entry HQ local machine software right so we're looking at a registry key um, get AD user limited user now this is going to be a ton of stuff that goes across here active directory stuff is uh, it's overwhelming and this doesn't completely help it but this is actually I don't know if anybody's tried to work with active directory stuff you um, it's it's very very powerful very granular and you work with a bunch of these a bunch of GUIDs <laughs> and you have things like, well, just come talk to me about this a little bit later. But you can filter on things with Git Pack Access Control Entry. You can say, I want to see anything that has a principle of self or self and, uh, let's see, that didn't. There we go. So you can see, you know, only aces that have self. And you could do commas, you could do wildcards in here. Uh, you can filter on. You know, access rights, you can filter on, uh, let's see, we, we only want something that's going to apply to objects. So notice this one here doesn't apply to objects. So you could say applies to object. And you're going to see it, it left that one off. Now, it brought these in because they do apply to the object. They also apply to uh, child objects. So there's a lot Git Pack Access Control Entry can do. It's, it's, one of, it's actually, it may be, you know, what I feel is the most useful commandlet out of out of here, because remember, this is more. This is still. I'm not changing anything in the uh, that ACL.NET that default object that came from Git ACL, but it's giving you an easy way to view what's what's there. So next up, this uh, let's try to get get rid of using this new object. I mean that really is tough to to read and to try to understand what it's doing without having to go back and you could comment it, drop things down on separate lines, but what if we could just do new pack access control entry? Principal, limited user, folder rights, full control. So what this is going to do, we did not apply, we did not supply an ACE type. 
There you have allow, audit, or deny. We didn't apply, we didn't specify an applies to. Since we're working with the file system, it's going to default to object, child containers, child objects. Since we didn't say, hey, this is a deny, it's going to default to an allow. And we'll talk about this folder rights. You know, this is kind of a shortcut I've used there. That's obviously not going to work for like a service or something. We'll, we'll talk about that for the next rule that we create. But, you know, let's well, rule to add equals that. And if we take a look, rule to add. Now, this is not the right type that, you know, add access rule is going to be looking for. But it's actually all right. The module includes, uh, it, it can automatically do conversions to stuff. So if we do, uh, apparently I named that other one, ace to add. So I better do that to make sure that works. Again, take a look at the current ace. We do not have the limited user ace in there yet, granting full control. But if we run that and take a look, there is our limited user full control ace. So we've done that. We, we just cut out that new object, you know, that, that very .NET way to create that access control entry. Let's see if we can do the same thing with the, the ace to remove. And since I named the other one rule to remove, let's do that. Rule to uh, new pack access control entry, principal limited user. And instead of doing folder rights, you'll see, you know, there is, there's a folder rights, a registry rights, and active directory rights. Those are shortcuts for those types of objects. But if you're working with something a little more generic, like, uh, you know, uh, a ton of the other things that this works with, there's also an access mask parameter. Now this takes uh, an enumeration, it takes anything that can at some point be translated in, back into a number. And there's also a helper function called new pack access mask. And this is how you would, you know, hey, if you're working with a, a, a logical, you know, a share, you could do new pack access mask, share rights, active directory rights, all this stuff. This is actually what you use when you're defining your DSC resources or configurations. So in this case, we are working with folders again, so, you know, we'll do folders. We're trying to take delete away. And this time we do need to specify applies to because we don't want this to apply to the folders, subfolders, and files. We want it to just apply to the folder itself, so to object. We run that. And again, before we run remove access rule, let's take a look at how it's currently set. We have our single limited user there. And I need to make sure I don't run the old uh, ace to remover from earlier. So here's our new, new one that we just created. We run that, we take a look, and there we go. You know, it did the exact same, because, you know, again, we're, we're still just calling those .NET methods, the add access rule and remove, so it's going to do the same thing. <coughs> but you can see it's split it out, delete, uh, does not apply to the folder itself, but full control minus delete still applies to everything. So let's see, and you know what I forgot to do? I meant to copy this. So we can look at it later. Um, let's go back. Let's see. We change that. Got access. And yeah. Well, we'll basically keep rule to add like this. It's the same number of lines. So when we look at it later, we'll be looking at the same number of lines. It just won't be exactly the same. But let's see if we can simplify this a little bit more. What if instead of calling that new pack access control entry like that. What if we just came in and said we want to take the ACL, that security descriptor object, and pipe it to a function called add pack access control entry, and then just keep those, uh, those other parameters that way. That would get rid of having to call this method here. So again, let's start from scratch, take a look, and, and actually let's, uh, let's filter this on the limited user. Well, you can see right now there are no aces that uh, apply to limited user. So here's our kind of simplified where we, we cut out that .NET method. We're not calling add access uh, rule anymore. So we run that, come back and take a look. And, you know, this is probably starting to get repetitive, but we have our, our uh, ace there. So let's try to do the same thing. Instead of calling new pack access control entry as a separate step, let's pipe ACL into remove pack access control entry. So call that, take a look, there we go. So it did the exact same thing, but we just shaved two lines off. And this is starting to look a little bit more, in my opinion, like actual PowerShell. So we're still doing the, the separate, you know, get 
change and set. Let's, uh, let's see if we can take this a little bit further. The next thing I would try to do, there's actually a pass-through parameter on each of these. So you know what this is going to say is if we add pass-through, it's going to say take that security descriptor object, add an entry to it, and when you're done, emit that back on the pipeline, which means we can pipe these together. So even though it's the same number of lines there, that's technically a single line to do those two operations. And you could chain more of them together if you liked. And you know we're still in a state where this is only going to modify what's in memory. We start over, we do get ACL again. So we come down here, run that, and take a look. Same thing we were getting earlier. So, but now that was technically a one-liner there. So at this point, you could, if you wanted to, instead of having ACL here, you could call get ACL right there. That would send that to, on the pipeline. And then at the very end for this remove, you could do a pass through and then put set ACL at the end. And you technically have a one-liner. But what I want to talk about now is, you know, so that's about as far as it goes with the supplementing the native command list. If you wanted to, and if you want, let's say you wanted to do something like with a service though, so if you wanted to follow the same pattern of the git change then set, instead of git ACL, you would use git pack security descriptor. So let's run that real quick. And I want to show you uh, the default formatting for this thing. So the default formatting for this is not a table, it's not a list. It's actually, you know, uh, PowerShell has, you know, there's a format custom command list. So this is kind of a custom format. There is a table view. There is a list view. And so the list shows, uh, you know, a couple of other things. And, and notice, you know, it's showing there audit. It, that wasn't even requested. There's a difference between not requested and, and empty. In this case, we didn't even request it. Um, so, you know, this git pack security descriptor, I kind of already showed, you know, you could feed all those different types of objects into git access control entry. You can do the same thing for git pack security descriptor. I don't think we did a WMI namespace earlier. So system security, this is going to be the namespace for the uh, root CIMV2 WMI namespace, but git pack security descriptor. And you'll see uh, that looks, you know, obviously kind of, let's look at the access property. Same view that you would get from git uh, access control entry. So, you know, that's an actual WMI namespace security descriptor. <coughs> So this, you basically can replace git ACL with git pack security descriptor. And obviously, you know, there needs to be a set pack security descriptor. And this time, we're not going to do what if, and only because, I don't even think we've made any changes to this thing, but that, now yeah, let's go ahead and run this. By default, when you run the set, it's actually going to prompt you and make sure you want to do it. You can override that with force. But, and if this was in the console, it would look a little bit cleaner. You know, this isn't a, and actually that doesn't happen to look too bad. It looks like everything's lined up, but you'll, you'll, that's only because the username uh, is the same on both of them. You'll notice it, it you know, it's not a perfect, uh, perfectly lined up table there when you run it. But let's say no, because we are going to clean this up just a little bit more. Let's try to get rid of, let's get rid of the set real quick. All of the, you know, the, the uh, enable ACL inheritance, disable ACL inheritance, those are commandlets that we're really not going to cover right now. Um, any of them that modify security descriptors will also have this apply switch. And that basically means, hey, go ahead and act like I'm piping you to set security descriptor. So again, we start over. There's nothing there. Let's call that. And you can see that it has added them. It's going, you know, it, it wants to add them. We're going to tell it one more time, no. I promise this is this is getting somewhere. I'm going somewhere with it. Let's actually let's get rid of the call to get pack security descriptor. Let's actually say uh, you could just feed this thing a string. It's very accepting. You know, it will try to figure out what you're sending it. And there is actually a way for you to tell it, like you know, hey, this is a string, and it points to this type of object. But you could just say path. You could do dir <coughs> if you wanted it to work on everything below it. Um, you know, in this case, let's just do get item path, right? So we run that. We run that, and it wants to add it. And I'll, I did want to show you, you can do this completely silently. You know, you could, you could pipe something into it, or you could also say, you know, we're going to add an access control entry to path. When you're done with that, pass it through to remove and uh, apply. 
and we're going to say force. So last time, and actually this time around, we need to do path there. So that says go to the actual path. Don't, don't give me anything in memory. Give me what's actually on the path. If it's not there, we run that, and it is there. So, um, so that's about, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff. Like one thing that you can't do with, uh, you can actually, you can't do this to my knowledge with the built-in PowerShell stuff. You can get effective access. If anybody's ever used that effective access tab on the, uh, on the ACL editor. So you could say, I want to know what does limited user have? Oh, I should probably specify the principle. Limited user for uh, input object right so that's telling you you know that, let's format that as a list real quick that's that's what he has so if you want to see that a little bit more detailed there's a detailed switch and that says basically you know he has all of these are set to true they are granted so this kind of mimics that that checkbox style that you have uh, for the effective access will that, and will that work across UNC path Yes, and it would actually show you, it takes into account, if it can access the share permissions, you see this limited by, it would take share permissions into account because you know, share permissions and NTF permissions, it takes the most restrictive out of those. So if you, if you have full control NTF permissions but read, share, it would show you, you know, hey, can you write? Nope, that's limited by share permissions. So uh, For an admin share, it's a little different. Let's see what this thing has. Hold on, get WMI, or... Get SMB share. This is a test machine. No, this is a domain controller. So yeah, let's look at Sysball. So right, let's do uh, select last one. First, take a look. You know that you can actually get the share information, right? So let's do a git pack effective access. Uh, looks like everyone has read um, limited user detail. And hopefully this doesn't bomb out. Oh, hold on. It does look like it bombed out. Git pack security descriptor. I'll tell you what, let's see. Git pack effective access uh, path uh, local host <coughs> sysfall uh, principal limited user. Oop, sorry. That's a feature that hasn't been implemented yet, the device principal there. So you can see. Or maybe I lied about the, uh, I promise, uh, it, it should be working. Again, this is, if you go out to the TechNet Gallery, you're going to see a note where it says this is an experimental alpha build. Um, I promise it should have taken that into account. I, I apologize for it not. Uh, I'll try to figure it out, and maybe at lunchtime if somebody wants to come by, we can talk about it. Um, so. What was the question? Uh, they were asking uh, if it took you, if you could do that against a UNC name. So, I mean, you obviously can. You know, you can do NTFS rights against the UNC share. Anything that your user has rights to do, it can do that. Uh, and, you know, if you were to by default say, you know, if you pass it a UNC path, you know, this time around, let's say you want to see the share rights, right? So, localhost, sysball, you know, hey, that's showing NTFS rights. There's this parameter I, I didn't get a chance to cover called pack SD option where you can do some really, uh, some more advanced things. Bypass the ACL check. If you ever come across something that you, know, you don't have access to, uh, maybe if we have a minute, I'll, I'll demo that in just a second. But in this case, we're going to say object type. This is an LM share. So instead of you know, in, it, like what it was doing was you gave it a path and it said, you know, in, in its order of operations where it's like I don't know what a, what you know this is a string. I got to figure it out. The first thing it checks, uh, if I recall correctly, <laughs> is is it a valid file system path? It is. So that worked. NTFS writes it is. But you don't want to share now. Earlier when I, when I used the get SMB share, it knew that's a share object, so it knew what to do with it. Let's do something real quick. Um, let's go into PowerShell. So um, I think I actually have dir. Yeah, so get pack security descriptor, no access. And apparently I'm the owner. Hold on. Set. Remember, the owner has a couple of special, uh, uh, and actually, administrator has full control. So let's do this. Uh, set pack owner, no access, principal. Let's give it to limited user. 
So we get security. We're still going to be able to do this because full control is there. But if we come in and say remove, uh, let's add a deny. Add pack access control entry. Uh, no access. The principal is going to be me. And we want to say uh, ace type is going to be deny. And the folder rights are going to be full control. Don't let me do anything on that. The deny is going to override the other one. So try to get the security descriptor. We can't, right? Unless, and actually let's do it this way. Get pack access control entry, no access. We can't get that security descriptor. Unless we basically enable the backup privileges and you have to open the, the file a special way, but new pack SD option, bypass ACL check. Now we can get that. So you're, you're in a state where you can technically change stuff with this, but I'm actually probably going to just fully pull that out. There's a lot of gotchas with that. Um, but what this gives you the ability to do is you can't view this at all. Normally in the past, you'd have to take ownership. That's actually destructive, though, because you weren't able to view what the, the previous owner was. Well, here I can see that limited user is the owner. I could do something like this, check the owner, take ownership, make whatever changes I wanted, and then put it back how it belonged before if I wanted to. And there's, there's also a pretty complicated, uh, you, you can do a lot of uh, what I call inline uh, options. So that string path, you can actually, uh, you can't turn on the bypass ACL check with that, but you can tell it inline like to recurse. And actually you can do that with the pack SD option as well. Um, so the registry, you can do this right now, but only if you give it a, a full path to what you're trying to access. Um, I've, I've written the code that would let you actually you know, just enumerate all the keys. Because you have to basically open it, when you open the key, you have to open it a special way. You, you get it for free the way that the file system works. Um, but yeah, soon you would be able to literally say, you know, I, I can't view this stuff, but I, I want to back it up. You know, if you want to take git pack access control entry and pipe it to export CSV. The one thing that doesn't currently work, so, you know, you can do things like, let's go clean up that PowerShell folder. Git pack, and uh, well, we're a little bit over. So I'll do this and then I'll, I'll stop. So since, since lunch is next, I'm not uh, stopping anybody <laughs> else. I didn't mean no access. I meant C PowerShell. Who needs to eat? So remember we have limited user here. Let's do this principal limited user, right? We're getting those back. You can actually just take that and pipe that to remove pack access control. You didn't specify anything else, so it's going to take all those and bind them by the, the actual the property name. Uh, but you could also say, I want to take this and you could, you know, anything you do want to bind, like um, let's say you wanted to copy, let's do this real quick. Instead of remove, let's add and say principal administrator. So basically like every one of those entries you see there, I want you to just take a copy of that and, uh, and hopefully this works the way I've just promised it would. Uh, limited user, right, let's just do the whole thing, no filtering. So you can see we just copied the administrator stuff, oh, nice. right? So let's clean that up, get pack access, control entry, C PowerShell, uh, exclude inherited. We just want to see those guys, right? And then remove pack access, control entry. And we're going to force it. I, I also, if you look in the help, it helps about 30 to 40 percent done, <coughs> but I do kind of describe this whole uh, since this is going to be getting a non-security ob security descriptor object, it's going to just say you want to apply this. Uh, I'm saying force. Uh, I didn't mean folder rights. I'm saying force because I don't want to be prompted because you would be prompted four times because it's four separate actions. But we do that. Go back and take a look. No filtering on this. And we should only have inherited. So you can use that whole pattern of get and then literally pipe it to what you want. And you can, you can change. Uh, you could take this and make uh, almost like a replace function if you wanted to. Like, I want to replace this with this. So that's it. Um, uh, are there any more questions? I mean, I, I, I honestly don't mind, like, staying a little bit late for, and, you know, I'll go up and just grab something to eat real quick since we are kind of lucky that, you know, I'm not holding the next guy up. Um, Where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other module I've been using is not that good. I've been using the NTFS security module, yeah. and that's way better. Well, well, thank you very much. And, and oh, no, thank you. while uh, I'm going to take the question, but let me actually, hit the button. I'm going to hit the button, but let me put contact info up because, like I said, this is very experimental. When you go out to the page, it's going to say this is experimental. Use it in a test environment. 
Um, the get stuff, you know, is, is going to be safe. And if you want to use get ACL and set ACL and use this as a helper, you know, worst thing you're going to do is make it, you know, just check your security descriptor before you apply it. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to send me an email directly, you know, that's, that's an alias to an old email account that, you know, honestly, I don't care who you give that account, that email address to, magicron and outlook.com. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you won't see very much, but you can follow me at magicron. Uh, Mississippi PowerShell user group link is up there. And I have a blog. I just don't blog very much either. But go ahead, a question? Can you set permissions on the service control manager? Uh, yes and no, you can. Uh, something else that I didn't, the, the question was, can you set permissions on the service <laughs> control manager? The other thing about this module, if you can get to a binary or SDDL form of a security descriptor, you can get an object that you can work with. So. Um, what do you use? It, uh, the, S, the SC command lets you do it. Do you remember off the top of your head? So uh, let's let's do sc.exe. I think SD show. So we'll do this. There, there's a way for to get the service control manager. It just be SCM. Oh, uh, SCM. Yeah. So there's there's a way. To, there's probably like a separate switch, but I think so that works. This is for the bit service again. It's always my go-to service. So we're getting the SDDL right. Let's save that to the clipboard and see. Yeah, so we're getting a straight string. That's good. So we're going to say new pack access control. Actually, to make this a little more readable, SDDL equals that. New pack security descriptor, SDDL, and there's a binary form. You could do that as well. SDDL there. Now, first you're going to get this. You see everything's unknown. I have no idea what you just gave me. But you can come in and tell it. You know, hey, the object type, that's a service. Oh, okay. That's a service. I know. I know oh, what that is now. Wow. <laughs> you got the translator, man. The so, universal translator. Git pack access control entry. You know, again, shows you a more. And, and notice, we weren't working with uh, audit entries there. Since this SDDL string contained audit entries, notice that you're seeing audit failures, audit success and failures down there at the very bottom. So yeah, at this point, you have the same type of object. You make whatever changes you want to this, and then when you're done. So we're not going to actually save this out. So I don't know. Let's do something crazy like, uh, well, users have start and stop rights. Maybe we don't want that. So I didn't save that to anything, did I? So T bar uh, SD, right? So we say SD, remove pack access control entry, principal uh, users. And you could say, you know, access mask, new pack access mask, service, full control. You could do something like that. That's basically going to say, like, I want, you know, the, the entry right now says start and stop. When you come in and say, I want to remove full control, that means whatever's there, take it off. Now, it would have to match, you know, with the ace type, it, you know, allow all that. There's also another option where you just come in and say, I'm going to purge the access rules. I do not want that guy in there. So notice users have gone. So now when you're done with this, sd.sddl. So now you use sc.exe and SD set. And so anything you can get now, you obviously want to test that very, very, very carefully. Yeah. But anything you can get the security descriptor for in SDDL form or in binary form, you can then change it and then set it. Jason's coming probably to come yell at me and tell. Okay, never mind. So uh, yeah, I'll hit the button. Anybody wants to talk uh, at lunch after this, that's fine. There's, I got one more session coming up. Uh, it's going to be about DSC resources. So. Yeah. I would have killed for this module. I had audit my file systems.